This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. God never saves a person. You didn't save yourself. He never saves a person and then leads them to, them, leads them to themselves or, or leads him to his, himself to finish the work. And I promise that ain't what I understood when I first got saved. What I understood was now that you saved, you got to work it out now. You got to discipline yourself and you got to make yourself. And, and, and we, we really harped on human discipline to be able to accomplish the performing of work we didn't even start. Charlotte, North Carolina, are you ready for Change Experience 2023? Join Creflo Dollar and the World Changers Nation live on Friday, June 9th to get Psalm 91 equipped. Come worship with us and hear the life-changing message of grace in person. Seating is limited. Register now. Text CHANGE2023 to 51555. Scan the QR code or visit creflodollarministries.org. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know your love is here to stay. Oh, it's time we live a new life. Oh, let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. Today may be the, one of the not greatest challenges because of the level of difficulty, but today may be, may be the reason why Satan hates me so much is because of, of, of what we're, we're, we're going to share. Um, it's, it's like... It's like if God doesn't give me the utterance for this, I don't know how to say it. And that's why I say that challenging in, in no other aspect except to just rest in, in confidence um, that I'll have the utterance to say this to you. And so, you know, I, I got up this morning, and, and he says, you're not going to say what you hadn't said already? I said, Lord, I don't recall saying this. He said, go get your notebook. Look at the first and the second message in the series from 2022. And I did, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, there it is. I said, did I say it? He said, yeah, you said it, and they heard what you said, but it wasn't time for them to get the revelation of it. I said, okay. So today, here's what we're, we're going to be talking about. Um, I don't I even know what to call it, but we're going to talk about living life on a divine plane. There is a divine level of life that only comes through the discipline of grace. There is a level where religion exists. There's a level where good morals exist. But you can't spend all of this time, I mean, a whole year teaching on the gospel of grace, and then we're in a new year, and we're still teaching on the gospel of grace, not even talking about the last 10 or 12 years on the gospel of grace, but I'm talking about consistently. And so God sees fit to reveal this divine level of existence while you're in your physical body, a divine plane, if you will. Glory to God. There are some things the Christian... Bible talks about that are not 
humanly possible without the Holy Spirit. Things like, in everything give thanks and rejoice for everything. Somebody says, you know that scripture, but you ain't, that's, that's, that's more than human ability. So, I'm going to get started with what I feel like I need to start with. Go to Philippians chapter 1 and 6. This teaching is going to dive into moral conditions based on the human level versus moral conditions under the grace of God. There's a divine level, and then there's a human level. I'm in this because I want that divine level so there's an obvious difference between those who exist on that divine level and those who are moral, but it's on a human level. See, you don't, you don't, necessar- you don't have to have the Holy Ghost to attempt to live a moral life. You can try to achieve that through disciplines and determination and willpower. But it's not the same as, the, as what comes from the discipline or the life of grace. Now, Philippians chapter 1 and 6, um, and basically today I'm just going to depend on you. If I feel like I'm getting too far out, I'll just kind of pause and say, are you, are you with me? And you're going to say yes or don't say nothing at all. And I'm like, okay, I left, I left them. Let me back up and, and make sure I can... I can keep you on the bus, all right? Ain't no use to you getting on the bus if I'm going to take you somewhere you don't know where you're going, all right? And I don't need to be on the bus by myself leaving you at the bus stop. <laughs> Y'all, you've been in some of them churches before. They left you at the bus stop. You're like, what they preach today? I have no idea. <laughs> all right, so this is, this is going to go against religion. Satan hates me for this. He's about to hate you more for knowing it, and if you understand it, hate you aggressively. Because this, the devil does not want talk. Okay? Verse 6, let's read it out loud together uh, in the King James. He says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it, until the day of Jesus Christ. He which has begun a good work with, with you in you will, be form, will perform it. So who began the good work in you? Who? Jesus. All right, so who's supposed to uh, finish the good work in you? Jesus. All right, now let's, let's go to in the NLT real quick. The NLT. He says, and I am certain, wow, that God who began the work within you, this work is taking place within you, will continue his work. So, God started the work in you. What is that work he started in you? Ephesians chapter 2 and 8, your salvation. Flip over there real quick. I want to see that in the, in the, in the NLT. Ephesians 2 and 8. He started a work in you. He said, God saved you by his grace when you believed. So. You were saved when you believed, but it was a gift. He started, he, he saved you by his grace, and you can't take credit for this. You're, you being saved, you can't take credit for it. I know it looks like you can. It looks like you can say, well, I'm the one that decided to, 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 to get saved. And, and you're right. You made a decision to get saved. You made a decision to believe, but you didn't save yourself. Did you? You didn't save yourself. You believed, and that's the only thing that's required to access the work of grace, to access the Spirit of grace, the Holy Spirit and the work of grace. You believed so God could work. Ah, gosh. You believed so God could work. I'm going to say it one more time. You believed so God could work. And his, the first, the beginning of his work, because you believed, was he saved you. Hallelujah. He saved you. You can't take credit for it. And notice what it says. Him saving you was a gift. 
to further emphasize that if you did anything to deserve it, it would not be a gift. You believe he went to work on giving you and starting a gift. The start of the work was getting you saved. And that was a gift. You, you, we were too ignorant and too dumbfounded to even, even know. We couldn't, you, honey, if, I'd have, if I could save myself, I'd have saved myself before I got the gift to save myself. Okay? Now, so Philippians chapter 1 here, go back to 1 and 6 in the uh, NLT. So he that began a good work, I am certain that, that God who began the good work within you, that good work that was started in you was it started off with you being saved, all right? All right now watch this. The beginning of the work was saved by grace. The performance of the work, all right, so God is not only committed to the beginning of what started in you, he will also continue that work. He will perform that work. I'm listening to this, I'm like, what? You doing all of this? I thought I was supposed to be doing all this. And he says, no, I started it, I'm performing it. So though the beginning of the work was saved by grace, the performance of the work is disciplined by grace. So what God is going to do, he started the work saved, and he's going to perform the work disciplining you, disciplining your life, getting you to a point where you're disciplined in doing what's right by the grace of God. You go to bed with one desire, you wake up a week later and you don't want that no more, or you went to bed, woke up, you kept doing something, but now, check this out, now you're doing something that didn't used to bother you. But now that he started to work, it's now all of a sudden convicting you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're, you're, you, 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 there was a time having sex outside the marriage didn't convict you. It just, it just, you know, hey, what can I say? Smoking weed and doing stuff, it, it, it didn't bother you at all. Like, oh, that was a great high. And then you messed around and believed, and he started to work in you. Now, all of those things that you had a desire to do and that didn't bother you at all, and it was labeled as a good time, for some reason, all of a sudden, now you're feeling bad about it. Now you're feeling guilty. Now you're feeling convicted or I like this word better, you're, you're feeling convinced. What are you being convinced about? That, that I'm convinced that I don't need to do this. That's why you need to leave everybody alone, because until they get convinced, you sure ain't going to convince them. But I know somebody who moved on the inside who got, who got, who got a, a hold of a way to be able to convince him, and he's working in there. And, and so my challenge is this, how can I break what he's doing down to a level of where you can understand what he's already doing in you? You remember that. You used to cuss and it bother you at all. Now you cuss, you're like, nah, I know better than that. I feel bad for cussing out like that. Let me call and ask her to forgive me. You weren't thinking about that until the work was continuing in you, my God. You had a conscience, but you didn't have the Holy Ghost governing and disciplining and training that conscience. And so what you start doing is you think, well, I don't know why it's bothering me now. I don't care if it's bothering me. I don't know why, but I'm going to do it again. And the conviction won't go away. And then you start feeling like everybody know what I did. He's working. He's working. He started it. He's going to perform it. And it's going to be by the discipline, by grace, 
the discipline by grace. Now, listen to this statement. God never, 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 ever saves a person and then leads him to himself to finish the good work. God never saves a person. You didn't save yourself. He never saves a person and then leads them to, them, leads them to themselves or, or leads him to his, himself to finish the work. And I promise that ain't what I understood when I first got saved. What I understood was now that you saved, you got to work it out now. You got to discipline yourself and you got to make yourself. And, and, and we, we really harped on human discipline to be able to accomplish the performing of work we didn't even start. How many ever had somebody to start something in the natural that you didn't understand how to do it, and you had to call them up and say, well, you started this. I have no idea what to do, so I need to call you back. I called a person back that started this thing. You know, you wired my house. I don't know where you started it. I need to call you back because you started it. I need you to continue it. Right. Well, the Holy Ghost, God started the work in you. What did he look like? Saving you, starting the work, and then, and then bowing out and pouring all the responsibility on you to continue it. That's what I was taught. That's what I understood. I don't know if I talked or I just thought that's what I was supposed to do. Now that I'm saved, here's what I did. Now that I'm saved, can't do this, can't do this, can't do that, can't do this, can't do that. Sure can't do that no more. Oh, absolutely can't do that no more, okay? As if by me making a list that that was going to be worked out of me. And it worked out. I made a, I made a list one time. I made a list of 10 things one time, broke all 10 for the weekend. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, who can do this? Who can do this? I didn't start it. He started it. He needed to finish it. So what, I, what, I, what I've come to realize over the years is this. I am obviously in his way. I still think in my head, that I can finish this and I can continue something I, didn't, I can't even start. I don't even understand all this. All right, now, watch this carefully. Look at Psalms 138 and 8. Uh, look at it in the King James and then the NLT. All right, now, I'm taking my time on this right now. I've been stuck on one line. I am not rushing this at all, but are you on the bus? Yes. Okay. That's all that matters. That's, you're on the bus. If I ask that question one time, oh, you're on the bus and it's quiet, I say, uh-oh, I'm going to have to do a Farina Kacha and back up. <laughs> Check this out. The Lord will perfect or bring to maturity that which concerneth me. We see that scripture all the time, but didn't know the context of it. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of your hands. Wow. Now look at this in the NLT. Don't forsake the work of your hands. They knew something we didn't know. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. The plan that God has for your life, he's not depending on you to work it out. You don't even know where to go. But through the course of living, hallelujah, it's going to be through the course of living that God's going to begin to perform and work in you while you're living. Because while you're living, you give him access to all the stuff that comes through life, and he now can use all of the stuff that comes through your living as, as, uh, as uh, equipment to be used as courses to take you through to either work something in you or work something out of you. That's why it's important for you to live. That's why it's not important for you to go in a cave somewhere talking about I'm saved and I'm going to just disconnect from everybody. No, you need everybody, everybody that he puts you with 
to, to, so that God can use all them people to work stuff and to perform stuff in your life. You're not going to accomplish nothing by just becoming this little hermit and just idle and I ain't doing nothing. I ain't standing around this and I ain't doing that. And I'm going to quit that job because all them unsaved people there. Honey, there are unsaved people everywhere. And God will use every last one of them demon-possessed people to bring you to a place. I don't know what it is about Christians. We all were trying to run away with something, run away from something so we can get around. I'm a, I want to get around some Christians every day. You, you can't grow if you're around. Well, yes, you can. Some of these Christians. <laughs> Shoot, some. Yeah, sometimes I'd rather be around some sinners than that. I mean. be. So, yeah, you can grow. So he'll put you around all kinds of folks. He'll put you, out, he'll put, he'll put you around Christians and you know, he'll put you around all kinds of folks. Amen. <laughs> but you don't stop living while you're waiting on God to finish the work. Okay? You don't just stay away from everybody and pray. You pray while you're living. You pray while you inhale. You praise when you're not so much in hell. You thank him while you got a break. And then when some more hell come, this is course 102. And then you take a break, graduate, celebrate, and then course 103 coming. And so you finish with that level, now you're ready for course 200. They talking about you now. They slandering, how they used to say, scandalizing your name. All of that, that's course 200, all right? Course 201 is when Freddie said he loved you and Freddie used you and left you alone and broke your heart. That's course 201. That's course 201. And he's content, he's using all the stuff. Now you're broke, busted, and disgusted. Course 203. <laughs> Because there ain't no use to you having these courses, hallelujah, if you, if, listen, God want to show you how to work out each course. He wants to, uh, now I can build you, now I can teach you, now I can mature you, now I can, uh, you see, see, by yourself in a cave, you don't think nothing wrong with you. By yourself in a cave, you, you know you're going to heaven. You're away from nobody. You, you're away from everybody, and you know you go home, ain't nobody there. So you, you, and it's dangerous. Go home, ain't nobody there. So ain't nobody to challenge you. Ain't nobody to challenge you. When the doorbell ringing, and I look at Taffy, I'm like, doorbell ringing. She said, well, who's going to get it? <laughs> I got it the last time. Well, you can get it this time too, can't you? You, you got to have something to bring out of you the authenticity of who you are and the miles you got to travel to get to a place and the Spirit of God says, I'm going to have to do that. Because when you go around talking about how awesome you are, then the Holy Ghost whispers, you are so selfish. And refer to a situation in one of the courses and say, see what you did here? See what you did there? Look at there. They told you you couldn't sing and you quit the church. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. You brag about how, how disciplined you are and you can't even keep the commitment you made out of your own mouth. But he says, that's all right. I'm ready for course 301. Because in course 301, you're going to get fired for not being able to do what you need to do. <laughs> and in course 301, they're going to repossess your car, and you're going to lose your house in course 301. And I'm doing all of that so you'll learn that my grace is sufficient and that I had left you and you still believe in me, and you're not just going to tell me bye-bye because things ain't going your way. You know I got you sevenfold. I got your recompense. I got all of that there, but I need to see how you're doing, so I need to allow some stuff to shake you up a little bit so that we can continue on course. Does your lifestyle reflect who you are in Christ? God wants us to live on a divine level, but that's impossible with our human ability. In the series, Living Life at God's Altitude, Creflo Dollar leads us on a journey of discipline through grace. The very purpose of grace is to produce in the believer 
a life on that divine plane. Thinking of others as better than myself, that's the divine plane. Grace helps me to treat people better than myself. Not to treat people the way I want to be treated, but to treat them better than the way I want to be treated. Only grace can take you there. You can't do it. You can get all three messages today for a love gift of 20 U.S. dollars for CDs or 30 U.S. dollars for DVDs. Simply visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore. Scan the QR code or call the number on your screen to get yours before they run out. Are you ready for Grace Life Homecoming? We are. We're lining up exclusive in-person experiences at the World Dome on July 13th through the 15th. We're calling on the entire World Changers family members, partners, and friends to show up and show out for Grace Life Conference 2023. Joining Creflo and Taffy Dollar in our lineup of speakers are Clarence McClendon, Gregory DeCow, Michael Smith, and more with musical performances by Ty Trippett, William Murphy, and other surprise guests. We're bringing back the teen conference and children's ministry to make this homecoming a real family affair. You don't want to miss this free three-day experience. Register right now and get travel discounts. Text Grace Life to 51555. Scan the QR code on your screen. Visit worldchangers.org or call 866-477-7683 today. I pray that this broadcast blessed you today. I want you to pray about sowing a financial seed into this ministry. I also want to extend a special thanks to those of you who have remained our loyal partners, supporters, and friends. Your financial support goes a long, long way. Your donations help equip us with what we need to send this broadcast all over the world. And when you give to this ministry, you partner with us to reach people everywhere who are hurting and in need of the revelation of God's grace and love. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. No matter where you are on your personal journey, the Word of God can reach you. At work or simply needing to hear from the Lord, tune into World Changers every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Text Watch Now to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about services and stream times. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.